Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I'm the Director of Business Development for GTS Distribution, and I am here joined today by the very popular man in the big chair, the President's Chair. This is John Zinzer. He is the President of Alderac Entertainment Group, and we're actually going to be talking about two specific games and a little bit more broader discussion about the brand and the overall story of AEG as a whole. The two games we're going to be focusing on today, the first one is actually an expansion to a very, very good and very popular game that came out last year called War Chest. It's called War Chest Nobility. Uh, and then we're also going to be talking about a brand new game, which to be as transparent as humanly possible, I have played nine times since Gen Con, and it is in my top five of the year for 2019. It's called Ecos, the First Continent. It's designed by John D. Clare, the gentleman who did Mystic Veil vale and uh, Edge of Darkness. And it uses some really amazing mechanics to pull off a really, really simple, but really, really fun game. So I won't steal too much of John's thunder, but that's my quick intro for it. Of course. We're done. We're done, right? <laughs> like you play it nine times, it's in your top five. Uh, it is. It's amazing. I, I love it. I love it. So I'm really, I'm really excited about it. And, and John has some exciting stuff to share with you from a pre-order standpoint for that too as well. So, Great. Um, so with that, I will turn the mic over to you, sir. If there are any questions, I'll let you know as we go along. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, the great John Zinzer. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. So uh, this is the second one of these that I've done. Um, I'm a big question and answer person. I love it when I get uh, when I get questions. Um, you know, being uh, being on camera for 45 minutes with uh, with with no help is, is is never an easy thing for 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 me. So uh, so uh, I was telling Scott while while, while people were, were were joining into the chat that I um, that now. That I'm um, that we have made an announcement, made an official announcement that we're doing fewer fewer games. I think it's probably a good idea for me to start each of these things off to sort of talk about that decision and and where I think that we're at in that in that journey as a as a as a company. You know, the internal the internal joke um, is still that you know if this doesn't work, you know at you know at Gamma the following year, I'm going to make I'm going to have 59 releases. So. Um, it's you know probably good for all of us to to, to make this thing work. Um, we we actually started on this journey uh, almost two years ago now. Um, uh, last year, the the we, we knew we were going to be on the journey, and um, and we had talked about it, um, and then we sort of accidentally ended up on the journey because we had a few products that just didn't make it to schedule, and a few things that we we purposefully took off, and when we ended up looking at the at the products that we had on the schedule, we were like, wow, we only did you know four new games this year. Um, and our schedule for, for, for this year was, was basically the same. We, we, we knew that we were going to try to do one new game per quarter and then, uh, you know, a few expansions. But we even wanted to pull down on the number of expansions that we were doing. Uh, and the, uh, the autopsy that I'm writing, the first autopsy uh, 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 about this, talks about how um, it has definitely, we have definitely seen an uptick in um, the, 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 the fewer games that we are releasing. Um, we've, uh, we've, uh, seen much more talk about them. We've had a lot more time to focus on making sure that we, we pump the message up to, um, uh, buyers and players and retailers and distributors. Um, so from a focus standpoint, it is working, uh, you know, it's working extremely well. Um, there are, uh, there are a couple of weird things that have that have that that, that have happened. I, I can say that we are not yet profitable on this on this um, on this path. Uh, I'm not worried about it, as you guys all know. We sold Love Letter, and and um, you know that allowed us to actually do this. So when you know anybody ever asks you, you know, why did AEG sell you know an amazing product like Love Letter? The answer is to transform our company. Right? We did that so that we would have the finances to to fail for a while while we you know, got to another place where we could make another love letter, but maybe that love letter might have a 40 or $50 price tag instead of a $10 price tag. Um, we, uh, you know, the, the second thing is, is that, um, is that even though we're doing fewer games and we know we're making better games across the board, there's still this sort of weird um, hierarchy of where our games stand on the release schedule. Um, uh, as, as an example, we, um, we had an amazing, uh, we do a big game night each year. We released um, three games at big game night this year. We released uh, Point Salad and Curios and Walking in Burano. Walking in Burano was a game that was already released from uh, Emperor S4. 
it's it's probably one of the jewels of their of their of their already excellent catalog. So we were excited to get that one. Um, Curios, we always knew that Curios was going to be sort of a surprise hit, and um, uh, Point Salad was obviously going to be a hit from the day that that we that that, that we played that game. And um, and all three games are doing fantastically, um, but Point Salad is just like sucking all of the air out of the room um, because it is doing so well, right? Like we sold more copies of Point Salad at Gen Con than we have sold of any other game ever. The, the Saturday after we, um, we had big game night, there was a line around our booth and we sold 400 copies in three hours. On top of the copies we sold at big game night, it was just, it was a you know, marvelous success for us. Um, and, uh, and both Curios and um, Walking in Brano are doing great compared to what our games would have done, say, a year and a half ago. Um, but it is really sort of hard to keep the, the noise to, um, to release ratio up for, for, for our partners. So I, I think that my message to, 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 to retailers is that, um, you know, the games that we're doing really, really well, we are doing really well. The point salads and the tiny towns and the um, uh, 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 upcoming ecos, right? Those games are are are, are definitely a cut above, um, but but we but we've cut out you know seventy percent of the rest of our releases. So every release that we publish, we think you know deserves the same kind of noise. And now we're even realizing, you know, that even internally with you know five or six releases a year, if you include the the, the stuff we're doing for big game night, that 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 even some of those aren't going to get quite the hype that we would like for them or that they deserve to get. And so we're asking retailers to make sure that they, um, that they take a look at the entirety of our new release line and not just the things that are super hot. Cause I feel like every quarter uh, or every six months, we're going to have, we're going to have a game that sucks the air out of the room. We've got a few next year that I know that that's going to happen. And I'm trying to have to figure out how to balance, balance that as well. So, um, uh, that was that, that. That's sort of the update on what's happening. We're really excited about it, and we think that um, we, you know, we think that, that the launch of Tiny Towns this year, um, like Scott said, it's it's one of his top five um, for the year, and you know, bookmarking that with with Ecos is going to be is going to be great for us. So, um, okay, uh, any questions so far, Scott? Am I? Uh, no questions have come in so far, just so retailers know if you haven't opened up your chat window. Um, I did put information in there about the item codes for both War Chest Nobility and Ecos First Continent. Um, and as John was talking about the big game night games, I also put that in there for Point Salad, Walking in Burano, and Curious, or Curios. Uh, all three of those, uh, Point Salad, Walking in Burano, and Curious are available from GTS right now, so those can be ordered immediately. Um, I did yeah. forget to mention at the beginning, and this is just a good reminder, we always do this when we do our webinars and we have uh, promotions for them, but uh, if you order or pre-order War Chest Nobility or Ecos the First Continent this week between today and next Monday the 2nd, you'll actually also get 52% off from GTS, so that's a great opportunity as well. So, Great. Um, Derek has a question, says, what is the schedule for Tiny Town's returnability program? Um, I think that's actually Ooh, that's a bad. That's a bad question. <laughs> that's a bad question. Uh, you know, I think we're probably in the window for the for the Tiny Towns Returnability Program. If you need to contact us about um, about any Tiny Towns, um, you can email our customer service email, and we will um, we will get you situated on that. But you know, okay. Pat Taylor, you started off my thing with a question that is obviously I have Tiny Towns on my shelf, so we have to figure out how to help you. Sure. We have to help you sell that. What's the, uh, what's the email for that, John, for them to yeah, use? It is, that... it is always customer service at alldirect.com, and then that will get dispersed to the, 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 the people who are, who, who are handling it. Perfect. Okay, I put that in the chat just so everybody has it. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay, so, um, uh, so now we'll move on to, uh, to talking about War Chest. So um, War Chest Nobility is the uh, – I've, I've got a copy of the War Chest game. I do not have a copy of the War Chest Nobility expansion here. Um, War Chest um, is uh, the last game we did last year, um, and we, um, you know, we were we were a little timid with our initial print run for this for this product. And timid in the gaming industry now is um, 
it was somewhere between five and 7,000 copies, um, which I think when you compare that to what other people are doing, you're, you're gonna find that the, the Timid is actually 3,000, two or 3,000 copies for a, lot of, for a lot of game companies. But we, we literally said we don't wanna publish a game that we don't feel like we can print 10,000 copies of, um, which is sort of our benchmark for, for um, you know, minimum level of success that we need to be able to hit if we're doing fewer games. Um, but the the <laughs> the cost to um, to publish War Chest measured against the, um, the the potential failure of that product caused us to 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 back off on on how much we were going to print. It's a low profit product for us because of the um, oh, sorry, I need to pull a couple things out of there. Uh, because of the expense involved, I've got uh, it's a game that uses poker chips and they go into a bag and it's a um, it's a bag building strategy game. Um, this game is, uh, has just cracked, it just cracked the top 10 or top nine, uh, of strategy games on, on, on board game geek, uh, and continues to go up. It's got an, uh, it's got a, uh, an 8.0 rating on board game geek. Um, and it's got there generically. We, um, we have a couple of other games that are in the 8 point, 8, 8 point something range. Um, those are all, um, those are a couple of games that we kickstarted and, uh, we we kind of feel that a that a big Kickstarter gets a, you know maybe a half a point or even a, a point bump sometimes because you know people are so excited and and they want to be a part of something that they spent so much money on, um, and so when a product makes it past that 8.0 rating now um, on its own without Kickstarter or without anything else that that I think is a it's a huge accomplishment for a product. Um, we are still doing really well with War Chest, but we're not a hundred percent sure where we're selling all of the product. Our hope is is that um, uh, is that our retailers are um, uh, have one or two copies of War Chest in stock all the time, and as they're selling through them, they're, it, it has made their their list of games that they restock. Um, and if it's not on your list of games or you don't have it in your stock, we we understand. We we blew out of the first five to seven thousand copies. Then it took us four months to get it back in stock, which in this industry nowadays is um, is is one of the kisses of death. Um, uh, when we got it back in stock, we did, um, you know, we did bump up to where we were selling three to six hundred copies a month. But our, but our analysis of that three to six hundred copies a month is that a lot of those copies are being sold um, not through our, you know, our traditional retailers. So it's our hope that with this first expansion, that um, retailers get an opportunity to restock the base game of War Chest, and that they serve all the customers that bought the original War Chest, and even create and build new customers for the game. My guess is that War Chest is going to be around for a very long time. Um, it it is it has got all the sort of earmarks of a um, uh, you know if not an evergreen product, a product that we are going to that, that we're going to see you know steady sales on moving forward um, because of the rating, because of uh, the quality of the product, and just because it, you know when you when you play it, if you play this type of game, it, it lives in the same category as say Omitoma. Um, which I know Scott was a huge fan of, and I actually was a huge fan of it too. Um, the, my Onitoma story is, is that I saw the Japanese version of that game, and I did have an opportunity to buy it, and um, and it, it, it just wasn't. It it was it was great, but it, I, I couldn't imagine how we were going to level that game up into um, in, into something that we could sell. And then when I saw um, the final Onitoma product in the U.S., I thought, oh, that is how you level up a game, right? So when we built War Chest, that was that we had a copy of Onitoma there, we had a copy of the Duke, and we basically said, listen, this is where we want to live. We are going to be competing with these games. Our game has to be, our game has to be, you know, um, tactile and beautiful and, and have that same sort of presence that, that these games do in order to compete in, you know, in that very sort of, um, small club of, of, of great strategy games. And, and we feel like we've done that. So um, I believe the release date for that product's either Oct October or November, is that correct, Scott? Yes, War Chest Nobility, we have it listed as a release date of 1025, so right at the end of October. Fantastic, right at the end of October. So and you were I, spot on, it's number eight on BGG on under abstract games, and it is with a tremendously good a lot of good company in there, so it's really exciting. Uh, Mark Wooten, the developer, is the person that basically said, listen, you know, we are doing this game, and I said, a two-player strategy game, you know, how are we gonna fit this, you know, how, how, do we, how do we do this super expensive product, and he, and he fought for it. He's, 
Yeah, uh, Kyle Nunn just joined us, our, our director of sales, and, and, and he's shaking his head because he knows like I do, Mark is going to be, every time that thing ticks up a point, we get a, we get a 15 minute Scottish, you know, cheer. And, <laughs> and, 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 um, That's pretty amazing though, to be in the top 10 of any category on BGG within a year of release. That's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, he's trying to he's trying to outdistance Tiny Towns because he's, he's, he's he knows that the Tiny Towns is going to break into the top ten and 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 he just doesn't want something that'll bump him out. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're, competition. <laughs> we are excited about it. We we highly recommend the expansion. It is um, uh, it, if you notice, it's four new units for the game. Uh, the units add a um, a different style of play, um, but it doesn't complicate complicate the game in any way because you're always playing with the same number of units in your um, in, in, in your product, um, you can see the, uh, sorry, well, you see the nobility, the, the, the war chest box actually looks like a, a chest. Um, the expansion um, and potentially the second expansion, they look like books and they are the same size. So when you, it, it's got amazing shelf presence. When you put it on your, your shelf, it looks like a little um, chest and a couple of tomes that, that, that go with it. So um, all in all, you know, we're, we're, we're really excited about that. Did I miss anything there, Kyle, that, uh, that, that, that these folks, fine folks need to know other than pre-order it this week to get your discount through GTS? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, excellent. Uh, okay, oh, Kat's joining us. Uh, there is a good question from uh, Samantha. She asks, do you have to have the base game of War Chest in order to use Nobility or is Nobility a standalone expansion? It is not a standalone expansion. You do, okay. do need to have the base game to, to play it. Excellent question. Excellent yeah. question. Okay, so um, I guess the next thing we should do is we should, uh, is we should move on to Ecos. Um, Kyle, is there any way for you to share a picture um, of the Gen Con booth, the, the Ecos Gen Con booth in, inside this chat? I don't know if that's a possibility while I'm while I'm talking, but uh, if you do have any pictures, it's actually as simple as using the uh, little share button at the bottom of the video screen. So I'll, I'll let Kyle see if he can dig any up. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can dig one up. Okay, great. So, um, uh, uh, circling back around to our fewer game strategy, um, if you were at Gen Con this year, or you were following the the, the Tudor stuff on Gen Con, we. Um, we tried something very new this year at Gen Con. We decided that we were going to change our booth every day um, at the show. We, um, we, we started by um, focusing on um, uh, Edge of Darkness. Uh, and then we, uh, then we had a Tiny Towns Day. Then we had Big Game Night Day on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we did something that we have never done before, which is um, uh, you know, focus any part of our booth on a game that isn't going to release yet, that hasn't, that hasn't even come out. And that was Ecos. We, um, uh, you know, thanks to, um, thanks to the, the, the stretchy fabric that you can pull over those bars now at your booth and it doesn't take you six hours to set up a booth, we were able to, 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 to quick change our booth in about 10 minutes every day. <laughs> um, and uh, and so the the Sunday booth was the Ecos booth, and uh, we had it packed with people who were were demoing the game. And you know our strategy there was to um, uh, there we go right there. There's the Ecos booth. Um, our, our strategy there was to uh, introduce the game to a number of uh, you know a number of consumers, and then also um, there's the Blockbuster booth. Um, and then also uh, get the you know influencers and bloggers and, and and bloggers out there to have an opportunity to get a first hand sort of touch and feel the game before they got to take their copy home with them. Uh, Ecos is the first game that we are actually going to um, that we are launching in multiple languages. Um, it will have two separate products. We're doing it in English and we are doing it in German. Um, uh, if you're interested in my thoughts on on how broken the the, the partnership business is, I am going to be doing a I'm working on a, a different blog thing where I talk about um, you know the English partnerships with with European countries, and you know how tough it is for 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 us because they always get the opportunity to wait until Essen to see and Germ and 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 Gen Con to see what the most popular games are before they make a decision about what they're going to publish. And oftentimes, uh, you know, a great game like Tiny Towns, let's say, you know, w doesn't get published for a, uh, you know, for a year in other countries after it's been released in English. And so um, part of our plan has to be that, that, that when we launch new games, they get launched in, in multiple languages. And um, uh, 
uh, you know, internally we said if we don't have partners who are willing to, to jump onto the, 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 the risk train with us, we're just going to start doing it ourselves. And so this, this German version is the beginning of that for us. So we're really excited that we're going to have it. Um, we're going to have it at Essen. Uh, so, Kyle, you want to? Uh, so, this is this is uh, this is the Ecos. This is the Ecos box. Um, Ecos is a. You want to post that picture back up of the gameplay, Kyle? That would be super awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ecos is a. Uh, is is it Ave Caesar? Is that the? I always call the game Ave Caesar because that's what you say. What is the the the, the game with the bingo mechanic? That um, uh, there we go, Scott. I know you're going to know the Rise name. of Augustus. There you go, Rise of Augustus. Yeah, so, Rome, um, bingo. <laughs> yeah, so so surprisingly, there have only been um, uh, two or three games that I you know that I know of that that, that that use this sort of mechanic. There's you know there's bingo and there's Rise of Augustus and now there's Ecos, which takes it to a, what we think is a, a completely new level. Um, the core concept of um, uh, of ecos is is that you have a um, you have a bag where you're drawing those white tokens the white tokens that are on the board that you guys are looking at you'll be drawing those white tokens out of the bag and each time the person who is drawing the tokens out of the bag reveals which one of them they are everyone who has cards in front of them may put a little power up token on a card that has that symbol much it like like playing bingo if somebody calls your number but you know, because this is the gaming industry, you know, much more interesting and complicated. Um, the um, those cards that you can see at the top of the screen, um, those cards represent um, the way that we are going to build um, our first continent when we play the game. Um, the first continent is uh, is is Africa, and um, and so we um, we have uh, oceans and we have. Uh, rivers and we have um, uh, we have plains and we have forests and jungles and uh, mountains and you can see those those cool little trees that are on the board there. Um, I can tell you those cool little trees didn't just happen overnight. The 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 the, the, the staff and Josh grinded over making those things so that they could they could have that that very cool sort of small base, big top and stand there on the thing. And I don't think we have any stacked on the mountains, but the mountains are actually designed so that you could stack a tree on. Um, on the flat space on the, on the mountains themselves. Um, this is a world building game where, um, where, you'll have, where you have a series of cards and each time you add something to the world, you get points for that and you're, you're racing to get a certain number of points before the end of the game. Um, you build um, land masses and then you, um, then you put your animals on those land masses and the animals are both predator and prey and there's a um, there's a sort of balance between the way the game plays between um, I'm going to build certain types of land masses so that I can put um, I can put you know my hippopotamus hippopotamus is next to uh, they need to be next to a certain kind of land mass to be able to get into play and to score bonus points um, and I want to I want to put them in a place that's away from you know um, a potential predator, um, uh, things like orcas, which you see in the, in, in the forefront, and, and there are sharks, which aren't on here, and there are gorillas, and there are other things. Um, some of these animals are, are super predators, and when you, get, um, when you get gazelles, and when you get any other kind of animal on the board, they just, you know, they just go, well, the, the sound we make when we're doing is much, 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 much. It's time for, time for dinner and scoring, and scoring points, right? So um, this board will end up being a, a big, very unique board setup every time you play the game. Um, it is, uh, you, you can play it with two to six players. It, um, it is simultaneous turns. And so everybody is always sort of involved in, in what's happening. Everybody cares what gets pulled out of the bag. Um, the game builds over time. So um, your first turn is exciting because you've, you've, you've got a few cards laid out and you're already, you know, you're already really interested in what's happening and how you're going to sort of evolve your strategy. Um, and as you get to the end, the, the, the end is super exciting because um, the game has a, uh, an end point when one player reaches um, the, the final victory point condition there, the, the, the game end is triggered, but the final pull of the bag continues until somebody pulls a, um, a wild symbol. I don't see a wild symbol on the table there, but until somebody pulls a... That is, a um, that is actually because the significance of the picture is uh, we drew out of their 40 tiles in the bag, two of them oh, were wild yeah. cards. We drew 38 tiles out of the bag before drawing the wild card. 
Okay, so. great. So that 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 um that that talks about my example perfectly. So you might um on the third or fourth tile coming out of the bag, you might cross, you know, the eighty points that you need to to to, to be winning the game. But um but then every time somebody pulls out a tile, people are sort of hoping for that. That, 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 that the game either does or does not end. And the person in the lead is sort of hoping, you know, let's get that wild card out so that I can end the game with a victory. And a lot of times what happens is the bag sort of magically does this thing where two or three players um, sort of jockey for position at the end of the game. And there's, there's, you know, always an exciting moment when people are screaming for rocks or trees or, or water in order to, you know, to get their, their final big cards to sort of pop off and, and, and do the thing that they're supposed to do. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I have to add a very funny story about this game. So the first time I saw this was at Gen Con and Kyle was sharing it with me and he taught me the basics. He taught me, you know, here's your cards. We're going to draw things out of the, the bag. And then when we draw them, you get to cover them up. And when you get to cover them up, you get to take the actions. And it was all working very cool. And I started playing the game and I started putting just kind of like what you see here. I was putting seals into the water. I was putting fish into the water. And I'm like, cool. It's like feels good your sieve building it gives you that you know feeling of accomplishment like you're doing something and then about five minutes in i'm like how do i get points i'm sitting here i'm like there's 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 nothing that i see just yet that's getting me points and he goes oh you'll you'll see you'll see and then literally the very next action i took was to draw a card and the card i drew was placing a shark and it says to place the shark and then the shark can move and it can eat any animal that's in the spaces it moves through and you get points for each one. And I was like, I'm in, this is like, if you can be jaws and like, you know, destroy everything. Like that was really, really cool. But the thing that really like has impressed me the most about this game is if you're familiar with Edge of Darkness or if you're familiar with uh, Mystic Veil, vale, John has this system of clear, transparent cards that overlap each other. So the overlapping then builds up your strength. And even though these are not clear plastic cards, they're still overlapping involved in the game in a very, very kind of subtle and devilish way. Um, for example, each of the things that you see here, the water, the grasslands, and the desert are all each individual habitats. But then in addition, the mountains develop a mountain habitat. So while at the very top of the picture, the sand area is a desert habitat and the grass area is a separate grass habitat, because they're adjacent to each other and have the mountains on them, they are both together considered part of the mountain habitat, which is one of the most unique scoring elements in the game in terms of how each different deck is going to want to build up that continent in certain ways to get points. So it's, it's just a game that I can tell you is so simple to learn but there's just so much strategy involved with it, which is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And I, I think you even go deeper than that. Like you can't put a tree on a desert habitat until you put a mountain on it. That's and right. once you put a mountain on it, now you can build a, you know, a, a combined tree habitat that has, has things going on. Um, and, you know, gorillas won't join a habitat that doesn't have a certain amount of trees. And yep. it's, just, it's, 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 it's very, very, very connected. John is a, you know, we are very, very lucky that John's an LA designer and that we got to meet him early in his career. And, um, uh, uh, you know, Ecos is, 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 is by far from the last great John Clare game that you guys are going to see, but it is. Um, uh, it also, uh, so you mentioned it earlier and Samantha asked a question on how many players can it play at once. Um, it is two to six players. Um, I've played at almost every player count and I can tell you that it, it's a phenomenal two player game, but even when you get up to that five and six player count, it's still just as fun. Cause like John said, everyone's taking simultaneous turns. So one person's pulling out a bag, everyone's placing their markers. There really is no downtime in the game at all, which is tremendous because I've played a lot of six player games where you take your turn and then you're kind of sitting around playing on your iPhone for the next like five, 10 minutes waiting for somebody to come around. So this one definitely keeps everybody engaged. And the uh, the various uh, the player levels are very interesting because at like two and three players, there's you've got this strategy in mind, and the likelihood of somebody disrupting that isn't quite that big. But when you get to the six player game, there's a lot of everybody's taking turns, and the, uh, the your actions are resolved from the person holding the bag clockwise. Yes. So if somebody decides to mess with the habitat that you wanted, you have to go all the way around as they're resolving actions. But at anything higher than four or five players, this tile grid gets huge. 
Yes. And it becomes yeah. this beautiful, amazing landscape. John, there were two questions that came up um, prior to the discussion about ECOS. Um, the first one was, is the Smash Up floor display still available? The old Smash Up floor display? Yeah. I don't think so, but we are working on a new floor display. I have not gotten an update from my team about whether we're going to get that in before the beginning of this year or not. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but if a retailer is interested in, uh, it, yeah, so we've got a new store display coming, which will, which will carry smash up, but it will also could, could be converted to carry other things. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm hoping we have that before the end of the year, but, uh, but, um, as we have learned, getting it to fit in a box that doesn't cost extra shipping takes that little bit of extra time to, uh, to not make that one millimeter mistake, which costs you $17 every time you ship one of them. So, <laughs> for sure. For we sure. also have yeah, the so, um, stu uh, Smash Up new store kit that includes the, uh, the shelf talker, uh, the open and close sign, and a big poster uh, that will be coming in the next month. Yeah, I have to tell you, if you're a retailer stocking up for Christmas, I mean, every retailer is allowed to buy one of those kits, even if you're not a new store. Um, and we, we really suggest that that's the way you stock up for Christmas. You're going to get all the sort of cool stuff that, 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 we've, that we've made for your, for your store for Christmas, and you're going to get a discount on the product on top of, uh, on top of that. So, um, Is there a specific name for that kit, John? It's called the new store kit. New store kit. Okay, cool. That's, that's right. Kyle can correct me if he when he's going to look at the, the solicitation, but nope. I think it's that all is right. absolutely correct. Okay, and I'm sure that's something that'll is that something that you guys are going to go through distribution on that we'll have information. To I believe it's already been solicited, right? You should already have it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You already have it. Double check. I have not it. seen that one, but I've been head down in eco, so that may be why. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Good reason. Um, there was another question about the War Chest Nobility uh, expansion. Um, does that fit in the original War Chest box, or is it designed to be in its own expansion box? It is designed to be in its own expansion box. Now, um, I, you know, I don't think I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going too far out on a limb saying that, um, that uh, we, we, currently have, uh, we currently have good ideas for two expansions for War Chest. We, it's always been sort of in our mind that we're going to do a couple of expansions for it. Um, there's a chance that with the second expansion, we might set up a situation where you can put them, put them both into the box that we have. We'll have to, to, to add another insert in the actual, in the actual war chest box, but right now it's not, it's not set up to, 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 to go into that box. It's, um, uh, it's, it, it's, it's easy, easy entry to, 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 to add them to the game, but not, um, it'd be more of a pain to put them all in the box and have to take the, all that stuff out. And um, Sean Wainwright from Phoenix Fire Games actually just posted a link to the new, new store starter kit that's on GTS's website. So that's perfect. Hey, Sean. Thanks, bud. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, so now let's get down to the sort of, sort of the brass tacks on this. We, um, we think this game is going to, we think we're, 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 we're doing the same thing for this game that we did for, for Space Base and for Tiny Towns and for Mystic Vale. Um, you know, we're offering a, a six or 12 copy purchase for retailers and, and, and full returnability and or trade out for that product if it does not sell for you. No risk at all. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to the day when, um, when, when we have convinced the retail world and the distribution world that, um, that, 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 that the smaller, faster, better plan is working and that, uh, and that all games should be from AEG should be bought in, you know, at these, at these deep levels. But we are very cognizant of the, uh, you know, I, it, companies are, are, it's crazy time in the business and there's 4,000 games being released this year. And, um, you know, if I had the, if I had the, if, it, it's just, it's tough as being a retailer. We know that. And so we're, you know, everything we do is designed to try to figure out how we can sell more products of, um, of games. We're very connected into the stuff that's happening with um, games like Wingspan and the, the allocations and all of the crazy stuff that's happening, you know, across other companies. And we're trying very hard to figure out a way to pick our games up out of the buzz need that get get them to the, the buzz point where, where enough people will be interested in, in picking them up. And, um, uh, uh, but but also be you know cognizant of the fact that you know we really want to sell um, 
you know, I, in, in my perfect world, we sell 80% of our games through, through hobby retailers. But I think a really good goal for a game company is to sell 50% of its games through, through, through hobby retailers, right? There's, there's so many ways to reach consumers now. Um, and for us and for you guys, the best thing that we can do is figure out how to sell, um, you know, 50% of 100,000 games is way better than 50% of 5,000 games, right? So um, our, our goal is to do everything we can to figure out how to get that, that, number, that number up for you guys. And so this, this promotion allows you to bring in 12 copies of the game, which allows you to set up a display inside of your store, which, um, which sort of creates that, that moment when a, you know, which, which you don't get to do very often because you know, buying 12 copies of a game is a huge risk for you as a retailer. We totally understand that. Um, but, but your customers come in and they immediately think, well, why are there 12 copies of that game sitting there? Like, what's so special about this product? They either go online and check it out or they're gonna ask the guy at the, the desk. And we're actually asking you guys to, to not say, well, that's there because AEG offered us a great deal, right? We want you to say, those, those games are there because you know, we, we talked to John Sinzer in the seminar and those games are awesome. Um, please do not buy 12 copies if you think you're gonna send them back. We don't, uh, we don't wanna get them back. We wanna sell them to your consumers. So, um, so I, I want to add something to that discussion because when in the position that I'm in with GTS, we talk to a lot of retailers and one of my favorite questions to ask them is what will help you pre-order more games? And almost unanimously, the number one answer is remove risk in some form or fashion. Yeah. Whether it's terms, whether it's pricing, whether it's returnability, something like that is the number one thing that retailers are looking for. And I've been saying for a very long time that the U.S. market is a fractured market. It's, you know, there's so much online competitiveness that's happening in the market. It's a very easy market to jump into. It's been something that's been very challenging from a brick and mortar retail store to find a way to, just like you said, have games rise above the noise, so to speak, right? Um, this is a phenomenal a, a moment, in my opinion, where a publisher puts their money where their mouth is. Um, we transparently, we hear it a lot from publishers where they tell us they want to make less games. They want to make less games, but it's not just as easy as that. And like John has alluded to in terms of his blog and some of the comments that he's probably going to be making here soon, it's a very challenging road to just say, we're going to make less games because coupled with that needs to come the right promotion and the right marketing and the right awareness, but also the right value in terms of the consumer and from the retailer. So I think that in my opinion, AEG is one of the few companies who's put their money where their mouth is for the last year. And obviously that showed this year with Tiny Towns. That was a tremendous release and we did extremely well with it as I believe all distributors did with it. Um, that means that it's doing well in retail, obviously, if distributors are doing well with it, which is a good thing. So seeing more opportunities like that with great games like Ecos is just gonna lead to more stuff. Uh, Derek just made a comment. And this is really good. Tiny Town, the Tiny Towns deal worked very well for us, so we will most likely do it for Ecos. However, we are in a small rural town, so I do not expect to sell all 12 copies. So please consider offering a lower entry point for some smaller stores at some point. So that's probably a good little bit of feedback. So Scott, you know my you, you know my feelings on that. Like we, we make these offers to our distributors, and then we. Um, you know, individually have a conversation with your sales rep or have a conversation with Scott. It, it doesn't do us any good for, 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 for somebody to get, you know, six copies that they just don't ultimately think that they can sell. So, um, you know, we, we're not going to say that we're retailer friendly and then force you to take product that, that, that isn't going to work for you. Um, at, where we want to get to, um, you know, say this time next year or, you know, early the following year is where we're, where, where we, we've reached a point with, you know, two or 300 of the best retailers in the country where, um, where this is happening on sort of a regular basis. And we've, we've um, we're, you, you know, you guys know that, that have built a trust up with us that we are making good game decisions. And I can tell you that it's really hard as a company, if you're releasing 40 releases a year, like you're going to release you're going to release a bunch of bad games. And when, when you're releasing seven games a year, you know, our biggest worry is, is that we are going to release a, you know, a, a stinker that we're going to get blinders on and that we're just going to release a stinker. But, um, you know, knock on wood so far that has not, that, that has not happened, but it's going to happen. And, and um, I think that, uh, you know, our goal with retail is to get to a place where they are, uh, you know, confident in their relationship with AEG, um, 
you know, I'm not going on like, you know, any retailer that's ever contacted us directly and said, I've got problems with your product. We fixed <laughs> this 12 copy thing is a, it's a, it's a, it's a way to put this out there in the news. Right. But, but from the day I sold, you know, my first box of legend of the five rings, you know, we, we sold that first box and then the market collapsed and we had to figure out a way to get games into stores. And we offered, you know, a guaranteed demo program or full returnability on our first game that we ever put out there. And I've never said no to a retailer um, who has called me and said, you know, I'm overstocked on your product. What do I do? Um, my staff has been trained to basically say, you know, let's figure out how we can move that product. Maybe we can do a sale. Maybe we can get other stuff in. So, you know, this is me telling you, if you're looking at your shelves and you're seeing EEG product of another kind that's on your shelf that has not moved and that causes you any, you know, sort of anxiety, we put our money where our mouth is. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity to discount that product down as, you know, as long as you are changing it out with an AEG product that already exists, as long as you are continuing to support our goal to sell more copies of fewer games in this, in, in this era, at least that's our, that's our, that's our thing. We're, 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 we're all going to win. So, um, you know, I am, well, I don't even know what to say. I'm so psyched about the gaming industry right now. Right? I really am. Like two and a half years ago, I was burnt. I was done. I was like, wow, you know, like what, what, what am I going to, you know, how am I going to get back to that, to that, that, that excitement that I've always had. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I met a couple of the right people. I started gaming a whole lot more. I, um, uh, you know, I, I reconnected with the hobby that I, that I had started, which is, you know, like, you know, for years I didn't play any games, right? It was nuts. I was making games, but I wasn't playing games. You know, now my staff, they, we play more games than we've ever played before. We're, we're really excited. We're, we're really anxious and scared and, 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 you know, it's, it's a crazy time, but it's, but when I think about it, it's always been a crazy time. The CCG time was the wild west and the, the, the downtime between that and then the role playing games happened and whiz kids and now board games and the massive board games that are coming in. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to be at the forefront of figuring out, you know, not just what's going to happen with this, this renaissance of board games, but you know, what's going to happen next, right? Like it's the, the one consistent thing has been the games have always been, you know, <laughs> nature finds a way, and so does gaming. Right? So <laughs> I, I, yeah, the, we are the, 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 all those of you guys that showed up today. We really appreciate it. That means that you know you guys love GTS, and and you're willing to give us part of your um, part of your Monday morning. Um, so this is great feedback on that topic. Uh, Carrie Bacon just said, uh, your new policy has increased our confidence in new games from AEG. And as a result, we pretty much carry your entire line. So that's, yeah, that's Thank you. tremendous. I, um, I've said it many times on our webinars that it's much easier from a retail position to focus on brands first and games second, because while, like John said, a brand may not hit a grand slam every single time, with their focus and goal of releasing less games and more attention to those games, there is a better opportunity for those two games to be better sellers and better hits in the market than if you just chase the individual random game going around. Um, I said for a very long time, there's always gonna be a Gloomhaven, there's always gonna be a Wingspan, there's always gonna be something that spikes up, that has a massive amount of demand, that doesn't have a lot of supply, and honestly, as retailers, you probably don't even need to chase those because they're things that either social media or the, the foot traffic is going to tell you about and you're going to learn about organically as it is already. But focusing on specific brands and, in my opinion, focusing on specific brands that have the brick and mortar like experience and the, the everything that you guys and girls are focusing on from a, a retail experience to your consumers at the forefront and the, the frontal cortex, that's a good brand to focus on. So that's one of the reasons we're very happy that AEG is one of our best partners and have the opportunity to do this with you guys. Okay, well, I don't, I don't think I have anything else. I think that, uh, I, you know, I, we, we talked about the big game night games. All three of those big game night games are gonna be sold out for holiday, guys. So um, we, are, uh, we are rushing to try to get more copies of, uh, of um, uh, point salad in um, mm -hmm. uh, before Black Friday. That's our sort of that's sort of our drop dead goal for us to be able to get any into in, in, into retail. And my my, uh, my 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 production guys are are you know, making a special trip over to China to try and make sure that we that we get some get get some of that and some of the things out. But um, 
There was a question about GTS getting more point salad in stock. Um, we do have it in most of the hubs, Scott. Um, Scott Morris had asked, is GTS getting more point salad in stock soon? Uh, right now, St. Louis has the bulk of the, the stock right now. So if your local warehouse is one of the spoke warehouses like uh, New York or Michigan or Arizona or anything like that, if it doesn't have any stock, just let your sales rep know and we can get that transferred over for you and get it out to you. Um, and then John Derrick asked a question. Uh, he asked it very politically correctly, but I have no problem uh, saying yeah. it. But he wants to know if you're going to be at the Alliance Open House in September. <laughs> I am not going to be at the Alliance Open House. We've had some, I've had some, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm not going to be there. It's one of my favorite open houses to, 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 to go to um, just because of the history of that open house. But I have not, uh, I have not attended any of the open houses this year. And I try to be cognizant of the fact when I don't attend any that I don't attend one. Sure. Okay, cool. So. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you taking the time to come talk about both games. As a reminder for the retailers, um, War Chest Nobility and Ecos First Continent, if you pre-order them between today and next Monday, September 2nd, if you're a GTS customer, you're going to be able to get 52% off MSRP. So great opportunity to take advantage of two promotions, really, especially when you're looking at Ecos. So you get to be able to order 12 or more and have returnability, plus you get 52% off MSRP. I mean, that's a that's a lot of stuff, which is really, really good. So yeah, I was just going to say, I, you know, I'm not going to be at the Alliance Open House, but Kyle oh, yeah. Todd will be there. <laughs> and you will be there, yeah. <laughs> Kyle and Todd are way better than you like, making sure that you get all the information that you need about our products. So I'll be there sort of waxing poetic about all the <laughs> like, you know, plans and, you know, look at my cool Ecos t-shirt. But There you go. I know I need one. I, I only have the Tiny Town shirt. I'm going to need to get a Tiny Town. So there we go. Very good. All right. Well, retailers, again, as always, really do appreciate y'all taking the time on Monday morning to come and join us and learn about this. We will post this onto YouTube later. So if anyone missed anything or has anything they want to go back to, be able to get that. We'll have that sent out. Uh, Jeff says, thank you for the information. We're selling a lot more AEG this year. That's awesome. I can't think of a better comment Thanks, to end on. So that's great. All right, All right, everyone. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great time in your stores this week. John, Kyle, thanks so much. Have a great week. All thank right. you. Bye-bye.